Hi everyone, this is Syrian Girl. With the ongoing Ebola outbreak, today I asked the question, is Ebola a biological weapon? Well, the short answer is yes. A simple search on Wikipedia will turn up that Ebola is a Category A biological weapon. This is according to the Biosecurity and Bioterrorism Journal of Science. And only yesterday, Russia's Federal Medical Biological Agency made a statement about Ebola's possible usage as a biological weapon. Hence, it is not groundless to question the root cause of the current outbreak. I was a little fascinated with Ebola as a teen, and what I learned from library books was that it was a super virus, that its only failing was it killed people so quickly that it didn't have a chance to spread. There are four strains of Ebola, the most dangerous being Ebola Zaire, which has a mortality rate of 90% at its worst. This is the strain we are told is the cause of the current outbreak. It struck me as a little strange that the current outbreak has a mortality rate of only 55%. However, it's possible that this will rise as the disease unfortunately takes its course. Furthermore, this outbreak has had unprecedented spread. To put it into perspective, before this, the biggest outbreak of Ebola Zaire was in 1976 when 318 people contracted the disease. In the current outbreak, there have been 1,603 at the time of this recording, which unfortunately will likely climb. What's to account for this change in the ability to spread? One mainstream media's explanation for this improved survivability are improvements in medical infrastructure. However, their explanation for the scale of the spread is the simultaneously poor infrastructure. How could things have gotten better and worse at the same time. Was there perhaps a mutation? Is the incubation period longer? Are people surviving longer to spread the disease to their family members? Does the virus aerosolize better? Could it be coincidental that it evolved into exactly what was needed for it to be a more effective biological weapon? Or is there something more we aren't privy to? There is nothing wrong with raising these questions because right now no one has the answer. All only have theories. It is also interesting that the two American aid workers who contracted the virus, Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Reitbull, were injected with a secret serum, an experimental cure called Zima. The FDA refused to comment about the serum, citing confidentiality. Zima is made by MAP Pharmaceutical Company, which is working in conjunction with the US government. According to this article, the serum was the result of a long-standing research program by the US government and military. So it's not a conspiracy theory, but a simple fact that the US government has been experimenting with Ebola. Apparently, US bioweapons researchers are already in Sierra Leone and have been for years. Tulane University, along with the US Army Medical Research Institute, are in Sierra Leone Guinea and Liberia for the announced purpose, among others, of detecting the future use of the fever virus as a bioweapon. The question is, how far does the experiment go and to what end? After all, if nuclear weapons have to be tested, why not biological weapons as well? Certainly, affected communities in Guinea and Liberia believe they are being experimented on. They are accusing healthcare workers, particularly Doctors Without Borders, of purposely spreading the disease. It may be laughable at face value, but perhaps they have reasons that we are not being told about. What would a biological weapons test look like? I imagine part of it would involve testing emergency procedures of Western countries and airports and their ability to control the spread of the disease, perhaps like a fire drill. Ebola is a relatively recent discovery, the first outbreak being as early as 1976 in the Congo. However, a little earlier than that, in 1967, was the first ever recorded outbreak of the Marburg virus. Ebola and Marburg are related and are the only members of the Filoviridae family of viruses. Interestingly, the first outbreak of Marburg did not occur in Africa, but in Germany and Yugoslavia. What causes these outbreaks out of the blue? None of these questions that I have asked today 
have been posed nor answered by the mainstream media. But I do not believe anyone should be ridiculed for daring to ask them. Certainly those who have suffered and lost loved ones deserve no less. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more news and analysis.